does weight matter when trying to win a World Strongest Man title? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Ciao, homie! Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. So of course many of you by now know that Alexei Novikov at 6'1 has won the 2020 World's Strongest Man because of guys like this guy right here who have reported on it online recently. But today we want to talk about whether weight matters as much as height. So 6'1 is substantially lower than the 6'4 average of all World's Strongest Men winners throughout history. But the question is, is his weight also below the average? And it didn't seem to matter for him if it is. Does it matter for others? What's the trend going forward? And what has been the trend in the past? So back to my block strongest encyclopedia, where we can take a look at all the information we need to answer this question. So again, 1977, the inaugural World Strongest Man was won by Bruce Wilhelm, and he was 331 pounds. So 1978 saw World Strongest Man return to Universal Studios in California, where Bruce won it again, again, 331. And then Don Reithout, a uh, substantially heavier guy at 357, won it in 1979, also in Universal Studios, California. 1980 saw World's Strongest Man come to Vernon, New Jersey, where Bill Kazmaier emerged as the dominant winner, and he is 326, so close to Bruce's weight, a little bit of a different physique if you saw the two. Um, Bill Kazmaier a lot more buff, if you want to use that word but 326 for him, and Bill wins in 1981 and 82 as well. So 1983 saw Jeff Capes emerge as the winner, and Jeff Capes was 375, so really heavy guy, but really tall guy also. John Paul Sigmarsson wins in 1984 in Sweden, and he was 293, so really close to Alexei Novikov's weight, the winner for 2020, which is really interesting because John Paul Sigmarsson ended up with four championships in World's Strongest Man. Jeff Capes repeats in 1985, and again, he was 375, and that one happened in Portugal. And then John Paul Sigmarsson wins the next two, again, his weight, 293, and he won in Nice in 1986, and then in Budapest in 1988, a reminder that there was no World's Strongest Man in 1987. Jamie Reeves wins in 1989 in San Sebastián, Spain, and he weighed 331. John Paul Sigmarsson gets yet another win in 1990 in Finland, and again, 293. And then we see the emergence of Magnus Ver Magnussen, the famous equipment tester who ends up winning the whole competition. He was 287, so fairly light, nimble guy, and he wins for the first time in 1991 in Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Then Ted Vanderpar, the tallest winner of all time, weighed in at 353, which sounds heavy, but not so much for that kind of height. And he wins in uh, Reykjavik, Iceland in 1992. Gary Taylor, one of the shortest winners, if not the shortest winner, I'd have to check, uh, 295 only for Gary Taylor, and he won in Orange, France. I'm sure the French pronounce that differently, Orange, or something of that nature, but he, he won that one. And then Ver Magnussen wins the next two years in 1994 and 95. Again, his weight, 287, and he wins again in 1996 in Mauritius, and uh, again, 287, so that rounds off his four World's Strongest Man wins to go along with Sigmarsson and Brian Shaw and Zaviskas. Yoko Ahola emerges on the scene in 1997 to win in Nevada. He was only 276. And then Magnus Samuelson, one of my favorites, because I really love that arm wrestling competition against Nathan Jones, weighed in at 344, a big, tall, heavy guy, and he won in Morocco in 1998. I believe his only World Strongest Man Championship, although he had other second and third place uh, placings. He got third place quite a few times. Yoko Ahola repeats again at 276, and that was in 1999 in Malta. And then Yanni Virtanen uh, busts on the scene to win in Sun City, South Africa in 2000. He was 287, 6'5", 287, if I'm, my research is correct. So 
pretty thin uh, as far as comparing him to the other winners. Sven Carlson comes in at 282, and he wins in Zambia in 2001. And then Marius Pujanowski begins his longtime reign in 2002, winning in Kuala Lumpur, and in 2003, winning in Victoria Falls, Zambia. He weighed in at 313. Vasil Virostyuk wins in the Bahamas in 2004, and he weighed 320. And then Pujanowski repeats in Chengdu, China in 2005 for his third of the five wins that he ends up with as the leader of all World's Strongest Man winners. And again, he's 313. Big Phil Fister standing at 6'6 and 375, just a giant man, wins in Sanya, China in 2006. And then Pujanowski rattles off two more wins in 2007 and 2008. And again, he was 313 pounds. Then Big Z begins his big reign. Uh, Big Z took a little while to get going, but once he got going, there was no stopping him in World's Strongest Man and in the Arnolds, which we'll talk about in another video. So he was at 6'3", 401 pounds, just a, a huge stocky man. And he wins in Malta in 2009 and in 2010 in Sun City, South Africa. Then begins kind of the back-and-forth rivalry, the greatest rivalry that many think in World's Strongest Man between Zaviskas and Brian Shaw, who wins in 2011 in Wingate, North Carolina, and Brian Shaw was 440 at his peak. So a lot of these weights that I grabbed were kind of at their peak or as close as I could figure out to when they won these things. Um, Terry Hollins, who we'll talk about, later in kind of the second and third place discussions that we have in other videos. His weight fluctuated a lot over the years, so I tried to grab what it was when he was doing those placings. Uh, Big Z again wins in 2012, and again he weighed 401. Brian Shaw again in 2013. The back and forth continues, 440 for Brian Shaw. Big Z again in 2014. Brian Shaw in 2015 and 16. And then Eddie Hall famously wins in 2017. And Eddie Hall was 433 pounds at six foot three. Eddie Hall would actually say six two and three quarters. And so I say famously because that's the world's strongest man where there was the controversy over the Viking press and Thor's uh, rep that wasn't counted when many people yours truly included, thought more reps shouldn't have been counted. So, we go to 2018, where Thor breaks through and gets his World's Strongest Man solo win. It's the only one he has, although he has great, uh, you know, second and third place placings and did great in the Arnolds as well. 2019, Martins Lises kind of goes from being the dragon in his past to being the likable goofball everyman and wins in 2019, and he was 331 pounds. And then Alexei Novikov, of course, won just about a week or two ago in um, uh, in Bradenton, Florida, and he weighed 298 at 6'1". So that's what all the weights are for every winner of World's Strongest Man from when it began in 1977 to the contest that just recently ended in 2020. Now, we want to determine, well, what has been the trend over time? And so let's take a look at the average first. So the average weight of a World's Strongest Man winner, if you look at all of them combined, is 341. So if you want to talk about Novikov specifically, he's substantially below the average World's Strongest Man winner and makes his win even more impressive in my eyes if you look at it that way. Then we have the median, meaning if you took all the weights and sorted them ascendingly, like from lowest to highest, the value in the middle. The value in the middle would be 326, even though the average is 341. And then the mode, meaning what is the um, most common weight that pops up is 287, and that's probably because it's Sigmerson who won a bunch of times, or uh, that's actually Magnus Vera Magnuson's weight, so I wouldn't put too much stock in that. Uh, it's not, does it's meaningless compared to the average. So now let's take a look and see um, who had the most wins. So Novikov has won once so far at that weight of 298. And if we look at other multiple winners, let's see if that height kind of stands up to the test of history to see if you can win not only once, but dominate over a series of years at 6-1 or somewhere close to it. So Bruce Wilhelm won twice at 6-2, and that's close to 6-1, and I call that a multiple winner. It's two times, right? So there's some evidence in favor of Novikov being able to repeat. 
if we go to Bill Kazmaier, also 6'2", and he won three times. So even uh, even more evidence there. Then we go to Jeff Capes, who won twice. Uh, he was 375, and so, again, let's look at these weights also, not just the heights of 6'1". I don't want to get stuck on that one in this video. So Wilhelm was 331 at that height, and Bill Kazmaier was 326. So similar heights to Novikov, but a lot heavier. So we should probably lean in favor of that argument for the purpose of this discussion and then again when we look at two-time winner Jeff Capes 375 you know what is that like 80 or 90 pounds heavier than Novikov four-time winner Sigmarsson kind of starts to break the mold so he is 293 within actually lighter than Novikov but within a few pounds so he starts to make the argument for Novikov being able to repeat actually the Sigmarsson argument then uh, Jeff Capes again and then we see who else? Magnus Ver Magnussen adds to that argument because he was 287. He's lighter than all these guys and won it four times. Uh, then who else won multiple World's Strongest Men? Yoko Ahola, only 276. And then we go to Marius Pujanowski, 313. Heavier than Novikov, but not by a whole lot. Um, what is that? 15 pounds heavier. So I would call that within the realm of that weight. And it's weird because Pujanowski looks so much more jacked than Novikov does. So I guess different body types, but uh, because they're the same height too. So it's uh, it's interesting to see how you can have different body types at the same weight or similar weights, not the same weight. He is heavier. And uh, then we go to Big Z, who was 401, just not comparable in terms of weight to Novikov, just immensely much huger than Novikov. And then Brian Shaw, same deal. Uh, 440 at his peak when he was competing. Much, 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 like 142 pounds heavier than Novikov, right? So not comparable. And then uh, those are all the multiple-time winners. So I would have to give the slight edge to the fact that there were guys as small as Novikov or smaller weight-wise that won multiple titles. There, there are plenty of them that are larger as well, but... I would have to say the evidence is slightly in favor of say, saying that Novikov is a fine weight to be able to repeat as World's Strongest Man champion. Now let's take a look at the trend over time visually and see how that looks. And so we'll bring down a chart that I put together that goes through all of the winners I just discussed kind of in a visual format. And so if we take a look at that, we'll see a dotted trend line that I've added first for the height, which we talked about in a previous video, but then here's the weight, and, and let's compare the two. So when we talked about height in my last video, we saw this trend, which the dotted line goes out 10 more years from now, so to 2030, to see, based on historical fluctuations in these things, where do we think we're going to end up? And you see the trend line is up, but very slightly up for height. Look at it for weight, though. Drastically up, right? Drastically. So if you look at um, sort of the beginning years, and you'll see these drop lines in my chart drop down to each name. So Bruce Wilhelm is this name here, this line. Kaz Meyer is this one. They were all kind of in that 330-ish, 340-ish, 350-ish, and then kind of it uh, jumps down for Sigmarsson and so forth, and it fluctuates up and down between that 290-ish, you know, 370-ish area. And then we have some years here between Sigmarsson and, I would say around here, Pujanowski, where the weights are really low, like they were kind of middle of the road, then went down, of course, with some fluctuations, but overall, we're way down for a bunch of years, and then starting off here with Big Z's reign, just giant weights for almost every winner up here, small fluctuations, but even the low ones are you know, three not above 396, that's 401, that's Big Z. So this is kind of Big Z and Brian Shaw going back and forth, and Half Thor's in here somewhere. And then, of course, the giant drop-off here to Martins here, and then to Novikov here. So, yes, the last two years have seen a dramatic drop-off in weight, but if you were to look at the overall trend from beginning of time, let's say 1977 of World's Strongest Man to today, the trend is dramatically up. So like the um, the average trend line kind of tells us that where we're going to end up in 2030 is around 
410 pounds or something like that is going to be the winner. So unless we see a bunch more years in a row of this lower weight continuing, meet me again here in 2030 where we crown the 410-pound winner. So I hope you found all of this interesting. I know a lot of videos online go into who the tallest or the heaviest or the shortest or the lightest uh, winners of World's Strongest Man are, but they don't go into everyone in between and give you all the analytics on averages and most common occurrences and what that information all means to ability to win. So that's what I wanted to give you today. And not to be outdone, I think that in future videos, I want to go into information about the runners up as well. So I have, you know, from Wikipedia, you can get this stuff. So I have the second place finishers, the third place finishers. And I want to talk about in future videos, like, how far off these people were from winning. Like, was Bob Young's height and weight just out of the realm of what the winner Bruce Wilhelm was, and that's why he didn't win, and things like that. So I want to give you kind of all the information and give you a place where you can come to get all of the details about every winner, runner-up, and third place, World's Strongest Man finisher, and Arnold finisher, all in one area where I give you my block's strongest encyclopedia. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.